Okay, welcome. What we have here is a special that I'm going to do. It's a full pictorial process of how I removed the engine, the clutch on the Ford Mondeo Mark III diesel estate with 130 brake horsepower. I'm doing this in picture form, photographs, each one, so it's not live video. First one is battery removed. Okay. Very important to take this photograph as the cables are very complicated. The next is the vacuum on the side of the air intake. Here we have the mass uh, flow sensor take take that off. And I shan't talk for every single one. But this is the order I'm removing them in. This is uh, your earthing cable. So like I said, this area, take a good photograph of this. Just That's just underneath the battery. This is where the uh, clutch area is. And the, every time I'm showing a photograph, what I'm doing is I'm disconnecting things. And I'm, I've taken a photograph to remind me where the things are. Uh, okay, here's another knot that I'm just about to remove underneath the vehicle now back on top near the battery this is the battery removed and the uh, the frame around it underneath it so the clutch area and I'm also labeling it with sellotape numbered so I know which ones I'm taking off in which order near the front of the engine number five here just a clip and uh, here's my hand showing there, showing this area to the front left of the vehicle near one of the belts, taking off the the cable that connects the uh, glow plugs underneath the vehicle. Yeah, I'm indicating this is near the fan underneath the vehicle and here's another plug iron plug there you can see to the right of my hand the oil filter this is the fuel filter on top of the vehicle now that's that connection connects to the uh, the ECU Incidentally, on the ECU, you can actually unscrew the top screw and and, and remove it. There's the ECU underneath that right-hand side uh, shock absorber area, the top of the shock absorber. So here's the um, alternator, and that's the fuel filter. So this area you remove. This is odd. This is where the shock absorber is on top of it, braces onto the vehicle. Doing the brakes now. And that's a uh, strut, one of the front ones. As I was saying, you can remove that ECU without really having to take that brace off that you saw me take off. Uh, so if you're doing anything like welding or something, you just get a, I think it's a 7mm socket, take that off. And you could just lift up the, the connection to the ECU. So front strut I think this must be the right hand strut notice how rusty it is that nut at the back of that strut so yeah and do this the ball joint nut and the uh, screw that fits in this one here pain in the arse notice how rusty it is make sure you've got a spare one handy screw goes in and a nut goes in the other side so this is the uh, left hand side now. Make sure you take you get a new screw. When that, when that thing goes bad on you, very difficult to get off. Very very difficult. This is the uh, bottom of the um, car now, and I'm kind of showing you. This is the underneath the radiator and the back of the uh, engine mount. 
not the engine mount, I mean the subframe, rear subframe, and rear. I'm kind of getting pictures of it, close pictures to make sure I line it up properly. Alternator again. There's that uh, lower rear engine mount. Subframe, getting shots of the subframe. Here is the um, fan belt, uh, fan. Uh, this must be the right hand side of the car, front. More shots of the subframe. Uh, so this car is a very large subframe that stretches from the back of the engine area to the front. Here's the other side of the subframe, the rear uh, subframe mount to the body. So this is not the rear mount, but the rear subframe mount. Notice I've got a very sturdy six ton jack, so I'm working on a slope unfortunately. I keep taking shots at because I'm really nervous about taking this off and not being able to line it up properly. And uh, so lining up properly is not as tough. Okay, back to the pictures. So here am I am um, getting a bit blurry here. I do apologise. Just taking quick snaps underneath the uh, radiator. Uh, this is the rear engine mount underneath the vehicle. Exhaust pipe showing. Taking that thing off. Here I am fairly long cheater bar shows me taking off so I try and take pictures of everything so I can run it in reverse when I'm putting it all back together because it's uh, quite a difficult task make sure you have lots of containers I am um, cable tiling the uh, radiator so when the bottom of the radiator mount comes off and that, that is connected to uh, the subframe it doesn't fall down I've just taped the steering wheel up no need for that I'm buckling the clutch not so there's no need to tape it all you gotta do is lock in the steering wheel do not let the steering wheel spin when you have got it uncoupled from here which is the base of the clutch so I've got uncoupled it just undo the nut 10 mil I think swing it over that's what it looks like before you lower the subframe so it's the steering mechanism is poking through and it's just that area there just swings over so I'm labelling negative battery cable so I don't forget positive is the uh, the red one the bottom of the so I'm showing the exhaust and where it connects to the catalytic converter this is the exhaust area this is hanging down now the lower engine mount taking off the last bolt lower engine mount I think this is uh, both double sided you can swing this around the wrong way and still be ok here it is removed <laughs> now I'm just making sure I remember which way around it goes but there was no need for that in the end taking, uh, well, as I take a nut off I've screwed a nut back on so I don't lose it try and keep most of my stuff uh, and this is how you remove this joint just get a screwdriver pop it off that one just rent put a screwdriver underneath pull it pop it off and that's where the clutch cable fits onto the clutch mechanism on top of the clutch pop it off using just a thing indicating there's a, the, the pipe that connects into the clutch the slave cylinder showing the little clips I'm using I'm just saying, look, don't lose, don't lose that. It's on the magnetic tray. Uh, okay, so I'm doing that. I'm doing the sort of things that hold down the clutch cable mechanism. Pointing the next nut that you remove, and it comes off. And I've, you see, I've disconnected the the, and it was dry. There was no oil in there. It all completely leaked out of the slave cylinder area. Okay, I was back on top of the car. Right hand side, right hand side of the top of the car. I'm pointing to this nut here that I have to remove for the radiator. There's a nut on the other side of the radiator 
or bolt I should say am I removing uh, one of the connectors connects to the radiator I'm just using my little magnetic tool to point to it there's a little kind of plastic thing take that off where the cable fits and the lower end fits there and take that off take that cable off I'm saying sooner or later you'll see me finding a fault I'm showing this is the left hand side there's a fault one of the cables that was causing a lot of smoking I'll show you and I'll make a big point of that in a minute where it, the cable had come apart and the car I think it's the uh, pressure sensor for the uh, air intake after it goes through the compressor uh, my word if that thing goes on you even you know, even if the cable flayed or something it is hell your car would just kangaroo won't go anywhere lack of power a tiny little sensor goes wrong on these modernish car I'm dropping the radiator here so the radiator is best dropped down notice my car is jacked up on the slope it's this one see it see the two right cables on that four connector four cable connector they look I'm pointing make a big point of it that was causing a car to smoke like hell a different combination of them breaking like the first one breaking your car kangaroo two of them on the right hand side breaking and you will smoke like hell this is a radiator pipe lower I think it's gun clipping it making sure I remember where which you know I'm taking photographs and I remember which goes where which end goes where uh, radiator again I think it must be underneath the car now Nope, back on top, right hand side, top, radiator pipe, pointing to something else near the horn. Okay, another radiator pipe to the left hand side on top of the car. Pointing to something else. I'm doing, doing, there's, I'm just pointing to the radiator hoses, I'm on, on doing them all. and uh, yet another radio hose this one top front engine near the dipstick I'm going look here there's a, a nut take that off EGR pipe this one notice the uh, heat shield around it EGR pipe this one was very very clogged as you should see later on when I try and and I've done a video on that how to unclog this pipe it was completely clogged up full of muck one being abused over the year by a previous owner didn't put the right fuels in is probably the best way of putting it best to put in this car a 130 brake horsepower it's a luxury model it's a gear version still pointing to the EGR make sure you put in clean proper clean diesel the car really really likes the premium diesel that shell makes here is the EGR look at the state of that completely I'll be honest with you the previous owner wasn't me was using cooking oil so there's the other end of the EGR pipe that fits that was the EGR completely clogged up do not use cooking oil it is a very stupid mistake to do look what happens and uh, later on I should show you the turbo water pipes now so uh, draining the rest of the fluid out it's a red one a red uh, antifreeze very very silly mistake you should see also look at the state of that clogness Clog clogged upness look at it totally ruined not one single bit of air can go through um, you should see also the turbo was completely ruined so um, the, I got this car next for next to nothing it was completely ruined by a previous owner using cooking oil as I said another water pipe so it, it, he had basically chucked it away couldn't use it anymore broke the clutch as well uh, 
had to do this job. Normally you could be able to, you should be able to do the clutch just by taking off the clutch uh, uh, that lid, the gearbox, but um, much easier. The drive belts need replacing, that's what I'm saying. Taking off, this must be the right hand side, taking off some of the shield from where the, the wheel arch area is. Pointing to the bolts, nuts and bolts I'm taking off next. This shield, I think it's the right hand side. Notice the strut still there. Taking off this side of the brake. Uh, not too bad a condition, this, this um, rotor. Some rusted. No, the, the, for some reason, it's a big car. And I use 15 millimeter bolts to bolt on the brake caliber. Now I've got another car, Hyundai i20, and that uses something like 18 millimeter or 17 millimeter bolts, and it's much easier to use 17 millimeter bolt, especially when they're going a bit rusty. 15, 15, a little bit of rust, and they've had it. I'm building a tool to do the alternator now. That was me building a tool. I've got a separate video that I'm taking off the. Uh, electrical connectors to the alternator you can do you can actually disconnect the alternator cables from above just reaching where your hand is where the fuel filter is from here you don't need to go underneath if you have for example had to do some welding you had to disconnect the alternator so alternator kind of like halfway out here and to take off the belt there's a, I've got another video that shows you how to do that on this car I built a tool for that. You should see me with the tool. So the the steering steering uh, end track end. Uh, the, uh, there's the alternator. Uh, I took it apart. I tried to see if I can see anything like a worn ro um, brushes, but they were okay actually. So I ended up putting them all back together again, putting this area back together and reusing it. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, break. Uh, alternator bracket that bracket area I bolt back on later on here's the uh, belt I bolt back on later on and use that to hoist the engine out because there's nowhere to hoist the engine out here's the belt coming out uh, okay just pointing at the bracket this is the bracket looking from above uh, still pointing the bracket so this is it bolted back on and I did I do use that later on that's a really sturdy point to hook your ca uh, not cables but the hoist material onto the hook the eye wire lit eye lit, lit whatever you call it on the right hand side top of the engine is not there on the left it is on the right it's not there so you have to you think of something. And there's the belt. So you need to kind of remove it to remove the belt, if I remember rightly. Here's the belt. Just trying to remind myself how the belt goes, I think this is what I'm doing. Get yourself a Haynes manual. In the Haynes manual, it shows you how the belt goes. And uh, that mechanism there. See that little square area near the... That's where near the... Uh, belt there's a little square hole there it is there's a square hole see it and that's where I put my special tool to pull back to release the tension on the belt and that's the, that's the bracket I later bolt back on I take all these wheels off oh, I'm just reminding myself these little um, it's got a little clip in it just reminding myself where which way the wheels go on this thing or, or whatever you call them I was spinning them put a bit of oil in them it's a good idea to do that okay so showing you there's a bolt that goes right through showing which way around this this wheel fits I guess that's what I'm doing here. So taking off now. 
see that spring in the middle that's the thing that gives the tension to the belt the the belt that fits onto the uh alternator and i do i did purchase a new belt uh this is one of the mounting bolts for the subframe the front one i think here i'm i'm doing that trick again while i'm trying to line it up trying to figure out how it lines up in the end i as you see later on i put paints around it oil paint actually from oil painting pictures kind of paint and i use that as a guide in later on another area of the um the wheel arch shields pointing to a little plastic thing that barely can be seen sub frame bolt front very visible this now i'm still see i'm worried here about taking it off don't don't worry too much you don't need any guide pins i put a bit of paint on it and it when i put it back on it was uh it went straight in <laughs> this is subframe front there's an electrical cable that fits on there and before you load the subframe you must take these plastic clips that clip onto the cable from i don't know where the wiring are on this somewhere fits on it i can't remember where it goes oh it's that cable that was flayed pressure sensor to the what do you call it t map or something like that not t map pressure sensor fits on that goes in the air intake subframe here is i painted it subframe bolts indicating this is the right hand side painting it so i'm getting i'm pretty nervous about taking this off where where if i can line it up again when you take it off you realize there's a kind of dirt ring around it anyway and this is a brand new car yeah, and it's obvious where it should go and it kind of fits goes wants to go where you want it to go if you know what i mean if it doesn't give it a boot here and there rubber sledgehammer it kick it and it will sort of go in the place i've got my calf on the slope so the nose is actually if i didn't jack it up the nose would be lower than the back end when i jacked it up the car was kind of level to be honest and i noticed the bricks as well i bricked it up so i've got six ton jacks three tons on each side tip three ton jack and bricks underneath the hard area of the of the f just behind the subframe there's like a hard area there and that's where i put the bricks so i've got the jack i've got my big jack ready Uh, and this is the control arm there's a bolt on that control arm one thing i want to make this is a very stupid see that hole on the right very stupid design they've gone to stop that up there's the control arm out the bolt they've stuck from going you know you drop it into the hole afterwards and the nut is underneath the subframe which is daft really you know, if you wanted to remove the control arm, to remove do all of this work I've done so far that you've seen, right, to remove that the uh, control arm, what a stupid idea! What I did when I put it all back together is I put the bolt in upside down, so I shoved it in from below to above, and the nut was on top. So from a hit from where, if I wanted to lower, remove the lower control arm right to here all i need to do is not do any of that what you know save myself a whole heap a lot of work right and uh that's what i did when i put it back together so that's a good tip is that a very rusted yeah look at the state of that i it was a hell to get off but i did get it out that's about the limit limit out or limit rustiness before you, you know you would have to before the hellishness of trying to get it off by drilling whatever technique sets in so i recommend changing that particular ball joint nut often as you can i can't remember what this is this talks i can't remember not what number it was his was it says 15 i think talk 15 and uh here is the other lower control arm coming off and uh, I'm showing that I've 
have I got the nut off yet? This is the lower ball joint. What am I doing? Am I banging it? Or have I got a sledgehammer? Okay, I have removed it. And I've knackered the rubber in it. And that's what I've done. The rubber on that lower ball joint. And they, they come as riveted. So what I'm doing... Oh, okay. Here I'm chiseling that thing off. I've drilled it. Chiseled it off. And I've perfectly drilled. I've laid it... Actually, how I did it was laid it on the floor. I just drilled smaller hole, bigger hole, bigger hole in it. And then chiseled it off. Okay. Yeah. I'm trying to get that uh, strut off notice I've got extra one and a half ton jacks ready to take the subframe when it eventually comes off uh, this is the steering rack and the way I did it was I the whole steering rack came off with it I and no I didn't I undid the nuts on the steering rack and I left the steer and I see how I'm doing. I'm suspending the steering rack. Stipped here I am ripping the nuts off the steering rack. And um and I lowered the st the subframe. You can leave the steering rack on on if you want to just do the lower control arm. Because you can lower it apparently about up to fifteen centimetres and it shouldn't really strain it anymore and the pipes are burst. Really dodgy really uh, hanging, hanging the uh, hanging the steering column uh, steering system on cable ties to the top of the plastic grill area I think that's how I did it And some more pipes. This is near the uh, lower bottom end, very near the catalytic converter. This one, these two clips. You un unclip them. Subframe, great success. That is a little piece of wood. Uh, anti roll bar. That's all still there. So, real hell to take the subframe off really real hell I did it recently again took the subframe off it wasn't as hard as this time around I think I left a lot of the le no, I didn't do any uh, up electronics on so scrub what I said earlier I didn't do the uh, upper all the, all the wires and I just left them all and I did take it I've got another video for that Okay, this is uh, must be the left hand side above the engine mount thing. This is the right hand side where the computer is. This side is now. I'm saying take these off. Notice the heat shield where the turbo is to the right of my hand. Okay, that off. There's the computer terminal ECU. I'm pointing it to it right now. Undo that. I can't remember where I was. 10 maybe undoing these pipes fuel pipes I think fuel pipe just the uh, right hand side above the drive belt more pipes uh, this is the pressure pipe from the uh, compressed air that comes from the turbo the compressed air pointing to something here think oh this is the this is the um, aircon pump whatever you call it compressor aircon compressor those bolts a couple I think two but you have to unbolt them and I'm thinking now of getting the engine out I I'm so you know I suspended this uh, compressor I suspended the compressor on um, cables. Obviously, uh, I don't want to mess with the uh, the air conditioning system. So, Haynes Manuals recommends just unbolting it, which is exactly what I did. So, left hand side, right hand side, my hand signals for that. And the nut, the steering knuckles, isn't it? 
The bearings, I think, were okay. I checked them. Everything to the steering knuckle, I uh, cleaned anything, any kind of bit of rust, I cleaned it properly. Is that the other end of that thing that has flayed the cable connector? I think it was. Uh, rear end, back of the engine, some of the pipes, there's the exhaust pipe, steering column dangling, taking all these off. I can't remember I took these off. Yes, I did. I did take them off. Uh, water pipes, I think. I remember rightly. Uh, this is this is coming from the compressor, the pipe, the other end of it. A couple of bracket holds that in. Took that off. Uh, so again, this is the water pipe, I think. No. Is it? I can't remember this one. Okay, this is the water pipe as well, pointing to. Yeah, is this thing was dry, uh, so nothing was pouring out, so I couldn't really tell what it was. I can't really tell now, but look at this is definitely the from the compressor. This pipe's got oil coming out. So the intercooler is already removed. I had a jack up underneath that, just in case. There's another little kind of funny looking Y shaped pipe. This is a water pipe, this one. I'm pointing to that. And this is the rear of the uh, engine now, to the lower rear. And it's a not. Uh, Definitely need to take photographs. There's so many curly little pipes that you have to refer back to. The next time you're in a garage or something and you've had the clutch removed and you just think and don't complain. I wouldn't complain about how much work, you know, if they charge you so much money for the clutch to be replaced. Think about the amount of work so far. Start a motor. So it's starting to undo the start motor now. A skilled mechanic might be able to get that gearbox off with the engine still on. They might just drop one side. It's possible. But if your car was knackered like this one was with a blocked up turbo and the EGR etc etc. It may be worthwhile just taking the engine out. And this is how much work it takes. Some more cables I'm pointing to. It's just above the start, uh, below the start motor. I'm pointing to. I think that's another water pipe. Pointing to. Pointing to another, apart from radio, another water pipe. So here's the view of the engine. Still there. So I'm thinking now, uh, I really want to get the engine out, and the engine is lowered, not raised, so you do not raise it out of the uh, car, do it the way they do it when they manufacture the thing. It is possible, but much better, because your hoist won't be able to take it. You know, you're going to lift it up, and then so at some point it's going to get stuck. So if you lower it from where you see it now, that's how that's how it's naturally done and a factory taking some more brackets off this is the water pump area this is the plastic cover that's the water pipe uh, water pump belt and that was also worn to so change that uh, tensioner for the water pump I think this is the tensioner bracket so the belt's really off really pulled it the other way, untensioned it if you want. This is the water pump. A uh, water pump is also connected to the, can't remember, something else as well. There's two pumps there, one water pump and the other pump, power steering pump is there as well and that's right. 
So one side's a water pump, one side's a power steering pump. The side you can see is the power steering pump with the metal tube coming out. The water pump is on the other side. And that's where you see some of them pipes near the um, starter motor go into. They're going into the water pump. Here it is, power steering pump off. Fluid, I don't think I've got any fluid in it. And there's a tiny little O-ring you can see, a little green one. That needs to be replaced. So go to the dealers and get a new little O-ring. Is my preference there. It's what I did. Now a little bracket, top of the engine now working for vacuum pipes. This vacuum pipe fits on the back, goes to the back or the uh, brake booster, the big round thing at the back, brake Bosch says brake booster, vacuum pipe, disconnect it there. There's some good videos explaining how uh, vacuum brake booster works. This one here, this is a little shit little clip, the little red one. Oh, as I took it off I broke it and it's still broken to this day and I've just used a uh, plumber's PDFE so to do to release that you push the clip down and then just pull the pipe out what I did was I probably I didn't really weren't sure how to pull that off and I just wrenched it out. and it kind of half broke and the left half in there but now I'm, I've got half a clip there still it won't pipe won't come out but I've got um, PDFE tape just to seal it up another vacuum pipe and that goes to the uh, oh, uh, actuator for the turbo that pipe you see going to that round thing just near the turbo uh, positive cable split these to remove the engine you need to split the positive cable there's two there split them up and one end stays with the engine the other end does not stay with the engine it stays with the harness that's left on it or with the rest of the car uh, this is the water pump no it's yes it is a water pump you need to separate the water pump from there so you to take the engine out this is near the battery this area just below the battery pointing all the uh, masses of tubing and pipes uh, that's the water pipe hanging there now <coughs> so to remove the engine you need to uncouple the water pump from the uh, power steering pump so my apologies the power steering pump is hanging there you hang the power steering pump out. With that power steering pump's got the metal uh, pipes connected to it. And some more of the harness. Here's the positive. Still haven't separated it yet. I'm pointing to it. Need to separate it from here. I'm labeling both cables as positive. Pointing to this pipe, okay. So, power uh, steering pump removed, hanging, hanging off with cable ties. So I've kind of just brought the positive cable over to the top of the my engine now. I'm saying take that little clip off. The ECU connector. Taking off the shaft. Use the bog standard uh, levered uh, crowbar thing. Can't remember what it's called. Pry bar. That's it it off weren't too difficult that. check the seals there's nothing leaking whether where the um, drive shaft fits in this is the 
the right hand side drive shaft splits into two this is the other half that's still left in there and there's a brake so bracket that surrounds the inner right hand drive shaft there's that water pump little kind of thing that was molten I'm saying used an o-ring set I can't remember I think I I didn't use one of them I, I went to the dealers and I got a proper little replacement take these off the front grill to take the front grill off take these off and this the bottom of that sign there the bottom of that fourth thing that grill kind of wedges into the top of the bumper so if you ever take that off make sure you kind of wedge it in properly look at the engine mounts now this is the left hand engine mount I think as soon as that nut comes there's only one nut that supports it right hand side has got two this is the right side two nuts that you can see one on the left hand side two on the right I didn't do that one I didn't take that nut off I'm looking at it I'm photographing it you don't need to do that no I'm still looking at it you don't need to do these there's uh, some sort of another little kind of thing that hangs off the right hand engine mount the front of it some sort of stabiliser take that. that single nut in the middle that's the thing you need to take off I'm winding them up I'm thinking which one do I take off is it these four is it these four I'm thinking no it's not it's the middle one turbo turbo area take off shield there's a vacuum pipe so far I haven't broken off that vacuum pipe with a red clip yet I'll do later on because I couldn't get it out so far so I left it in there so push the red clip in and the thing comes out do not make the same mistake I did sometimes you uh, I find an electrical connector and it's hell I can't figure out how to do it I'm coupling that the, the nuts there the bolts there I'm taking the whole catalytic converter out catalytic converter out checked it I cleaned it put it in some soapy water wasn't really much not uh, rubbish in any I could see right through it that's uh, right hand side where the drive shaft is I've taken off the bracket to access the inner drive shaft on the right side can't that's one of the heat pipes uh, exhaust pipes maybe I'm not sure here's that bracket for the right hand drive shaft uh, I've plugged the I've just got plastic bags and I just shoved them in a hole where the uh, transmission is More, uh, power steering pump not power steering pump, the aircon pump disconnect yeah this this is the aircon pump just pointing to a, a bolt, put the bolt back in so I don't lose it Uh, radiator area front left of the engine trying to take off the bumper now the lights so look how much goes into making a car so much stuff front left and light out and it gives me access to some of the bolts holding in the bumper another bumper bolt nut and bolt and screw wherever it is little kind of foam thing at the front of the bumper take the bumper off not sure what that is I'm pointing at something now the light is it lights taking off the light Oh, there's the connectors that connect onto the bumpers. There's the fog lights. There's a little kind of thing underneath the bumper. I must. All you got to do is get the cable out. Oh no, I didn't. I just uncoupled it. I've got plastic bags everywhere now, as you can see. Fog light, right side. Label everything. It just helps to save grey matter. Fog light, light.
right hand side bump area see where the uh, windscreen washer connector is I'll do that it's just near the bumper that little connector windscreen washer wherever it is um, another little bracket that's a uh, pipe hanging with a bungee and that was uh, an aircon bungee uh, aircon pipe front pump are gone looking at the front of the car there's the, the main metal bumper solidly built as you can see this Ford Mondeo look at the size and thickness of that uh, what do you call it the real bumper the metal bit taking off this pipe now I think this pipe connects to the intercooler I think oh it's the air intake pipe scoops in air in and it takes it to the air intake so my brother hoist so get, get, get yourself a, a someone help to help you out if you're going to do um, that, I'm bolting back on the uh, alternator back here there front right front left of the car all these little nuts and bolts intercooler notice I use a lot of clock tools in the UK they are bought from machine mart this even is hoisters Some little bracket just fits and holds in this pipe that supports the intercooler pipe. Radiator uh, dropped out or dropped, you know, dropped out. Earlier you saw me drop the radiator fan. This is the radiator dropping out. That's the thing hanging there. Is the um, Aircon pump or the power steering pump, I can't remember. Here's the way I've got it. The, the f left side's got a really strong eye there. I used the hoist, I put planks of wood there, and I load the engine onto the wood. There's the two ton straps, I think, strapping up. So that balancing arm thing. Can't remember how much. Seventy-eight pounds of that. Strapping out, strapping out. here it is. Strapping on the alternator bracket around the bottom of the engine. Here you can see the f uh, oil filter, which was a hell to take off. By the way, I had to destroy it in the end. Looking at the engine mount thing, I think that was the left hand side. Fuel pipe's covered up. Make sure nothing gets in. There you go. Nut off. Single nut. Left hand side. My hand's telling me. And the engine is being lifted by the hoist now. There's that little kind of stabiliser on the right hand engine mount. I'm not sure what that is. Kind of fits sideways under this. Not Still don't know. I can't figure out what that thing does. Two nuts gone from the right hand engine mount. And lower, lower, lower. Out comes the engine. In the cooler, taking it off now. Notice I've got six ton jacks but on bricks. Very heavy bricks. Engine comes out. So all this is uh, in aid of getting the uh, clutch changed 
and I do recommend unfortunately putting the same kind of dual mass flywheel back in even though it's a weakness reason being uh, if you if you get one of these kind of clutches that are single mass and it's a conversion it, this is not this car's not built for it lots of things can go wrong computer can go haywire uh, even though the, it will fit and I've heard the story where someone fit the single mass flywheel on like a clutch conversion kit thing and uh, their car kind of and this is not on the internet a real person I know their car seized up after I smoked and set it on fire if I remember right, what he said so or do all because the clutch rubbing or something wasn't made for it to get the same replacement I got my clutch from Eurocarpa I think dual mass flywheel comes with slave cylinder not safe cylinder slave yeah slave cylinder lower part of the slave cylinder here it is on the plank of wood more pipes hanging out. Front right, plastic, plastic bracket, and I'm bracing the engine so they don't topple over. Using these ratchet things, cargo harness, whatever you call them, ratcheting it up so that they go overnight. So don't roll over and start motor there. I do remove that. I think all I did for that was I just cleaned it. I think nothing wrong with the start motor. Just cleaned it up. That's an oil cooler to the right of the, to the left of that orange stick oil cooler. Can't remember what, uh, it's for cooling oil, but can't remember why they justify having an oil cooler. Start motor. I use all the torque settings for um, from the Haynes manual. Buy yourself Haynes manual for this Mark III Mondeo. Start motor on the table. So before you can get the gearbox off, get the start motor, and you can see that right white crust, crusty stuff. That's from the uh, slave cylinder bursting inside this, inside the gearbox, and it all goes crusty. Fan, checking the fan if it works. And it did work, by the way. So I've got, I'm trying to take off the gearbox, I think, now. Using all sorts of keep the engine steady I've got it still on the hoist <coughs> I'm just pointing all the bolts you have to take off to get the gearbox off there's a lower one that's a bit of a hellish one that I want to get to it's the longest one I think I'm pointing to Planks of wood to keep it steady. There, the bottom of that oil pan thing is quite tough, so you can lower the engine on, sit it on it, it won't buckle or anything. It's quite a tough, massive engine, really. This two litre turbo diesel, point all the nuts and bolts now, bolts, I should say. Another one. I can't remember how many in total. 
many. The long one, if I remember, was underneath. No, but not. I'm saying you should have saying the fifth bolt. I think in my hand, sixth bolt, number six. And there's one I missed, and that's underneath. I couldn't get it off, and there's one last one. Yeah, must be indicating the ninth one. Another one, another one. Take it off some is that a bracket. Looks more like a bracket than that is. Yeah, getting that bracket off. I think that bracket is where the catalytic converter sits against. A sensor. A flywheel sensor. Very important. Sensor to what? 10 o'clock from. So that, that tells you the car how far, I mean, tell a car past the uh, flywheel spinning. If that breaks, you've had it. When I, you, when I put the thing back, I was very, very careful about, so you got to get the sensor out, which is what I did do. There it is, it, you see, just above, taking it off. got to be very careful. I used uh, feeler gauges, quite a thick setting. And I put it in, I screwed it in to make sure. Oh, cover is off. We have our prize. The broken cover to the clutch cover. Everything there is mangled. The teeth are still there. Crusty stuff is all the oil. The power steering oil all kind of crusted. There it is, green and crusty. It was quite uh, caustic to the eye, actually. That noticed the broken uh, mechanism there on the slave cylinder. So the next day, notice it's just hanging there, falling apart completely. The spring is bit in pieces, and the ball bearings on. Uh, base there as you can see springs completely snapped the ball bearings are everywhere I my whoever sold me his car I can't remember I never asked him but there it is easy I mean you can do a lot of damage to your car if you shift from sixth gear to third gear all of a sudden could be you know maybe someone had done this done that to maybe the owner had done that to this car Six to third, that would really make your day, wouldn't it? So clutch material, not too bad, but worn. Take it off. There's a way. There's always a way. I think you know when you put these clutch things. There's a fat end. I can't remember. I think a fat end is gearbox end. I think. Be don't don't quote me on that. On that clutch material. There's another bit of a spring taken off. So that's actually a clutch fixture material. I think it's flat end to the gearbox. Flat end to the flywheel, I think. Check by Haynes manual. Okay, flywheel. See in my previous video, the flywheel was totally knackered. Notice it. Uh, it was rattling. A uh, good new flywheel should be very hard to move. And it shouldn't rattle or anything. Long cheater bar to take the flywheel off, of course. So, what am I doing here? Not sure. Um, near the turbo area, getting just this um, cable off. I think I was thinking about changing the chain as well, train driven, but then I thought, no, that's probably what it was. So, pointing to the flywheel key, uh, teeth. Uh, cable tie the flywheel. So, I'm using ways to lock the flywheel to turn the, the bolts, cable tying it, and notice the bracket top at 11 o'clock. 
try and lock the flywheel as I turn is a very long cheater bar a lot of force on there get yourself a new set of flywheel bolts from Ford thoroughly recommended do not use the old ones again and you need yourself also oh there it is off you need also you for yourself uh lock tight whatever it's called stuff that locks bolts checking it any leaks don't think there's any leaks i was thinking should i take any more off and i concluded don't bother it's not leaking or anything so i'm, I'm just eyeing it up thinking about it and then i thought no so i didn't do the chain i didn't do the 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 flywheel that where you saw the uh the bearing seal on the flywheel don't know what it's the official name for it oil cooler i did take this off didn't i no i didn't okay i'm looking at the oil filter and this was a bugger i had to destroy it oil cooler and uh, I think it shows me already having destroyed it here it is it's upside down now it's been destroyed and taken out so clean it up buy a new one in my case very messy job as you can see so you don't pay car mechanics enough so don't moan even when your car goes in for a job if you want that car fix you have to pay for it hellish job and this is the EGR mechanism vacuum driven completely blocked I had to completely clean this out. Not too bi not too bad actually, because uh, it's quite easily doable. And I'm pointing to the EGR cooler. There's a that's that's the cooler. Look at the state of it. The, if it's like that, I tried a million ways to try and clean it out. Impossible. I just had to get a second hand one. Like I said, do not use cooking oil in your car. Previous owner did. Do not use it. That's the result. You save yourself a couple of pounds. And that's the result. You totally ruin your car. Get premium fuel if you can afford it. That's the best stuff for this car. I brought 100 brake or 30 brake horsepower version. Premium fuel. It runs the best with the least amount of smoke. Uh, what is this? I can't remember. Oh, okay. This this area access is the uh, thermostat. So change the thermostat if you've got up to here. You might as well. still taking the thermostat out there it is get a new one just chuck the old one away just throw the old one away make sure the little bleed hole is at the top when you put it in oil return pipe from the turbo I pry barred it off I changed the seal in it, the little rubber seal. Um, I'm eyeing up the rear exhaust manifold. Eyeing up, eyeing up. I don't end up taking it off, I don't think. Oh, I, do, I think I do take it off. I do take it off. It didn't need cleaning or anything, it was okay. 
uh, turbo we're going out up now that's the actuator from the vacuum on the left vacuum actuator I'm just photographing how the mechanism is it looks a bit complicated that was jam solid by the way from the use of the wrong fuel there it is jammed up turbo opened up look at the state of that how's that meant to this is a dual turbo dual kind of vein a multi vein whatever it's called those are things that move the vein when the vacuum pump is on that will shift that and it will kind of move the veins at a different angle and gives it higher compressive compression I guess and I think I cleaned it up I use that little see that little um, pipe what do you call them them clips hose clips to uh, help me line up the thing the veins that's what I used because it's quite tricky once you take that turbo off it all falls apart little tiny rods and I remember at one point I lost the rod and it was hellish trying to look for it and I thought I was trying to think of putting a, a replacement kind of any old stainless steel thing in there in the end I found it a stroke of luck found the little rod that was in the turbo uh, starter motor starter motor lid off this is the inside of what the starter motor looks like it's cleaned it up I think and put, greased it again there's the brushes they look okay don't they to you they look okay to me not worn or anything nice lot of copper there so I thought why the hell put it back together alternator put it back together am I eyeing it up I can't remember eyeing it up to take apart did I have a second go at it yes I did don't know why I did that first time told me it didn't need doing yes I think I had a second go at it see if I can take it apart Oh, well, I can't remember a Bosch or is it a Bosch or layer? If you want to take it apart, really do. You, that's the thing you have to drill out the two little rivets. And if it needs changing, that's the bit. So turbo cleaned. Uh, didn't do the chain drive chain. Change the oil filter. just photographing every angle now that I can think of I do take the air intake manifold off photographing everything I can and the uh, air intake manifold is plastic even off on an old car like this it was perfectly fine it, w it wasn't breaking off or anything just the numerous things you have to unplug from the uh, harness that's left in the engine to be able to take off the intake manifold labelled up where I should connect all the um, and I've got these as labelled as alphabetical wherever because they are you know the harness connects to all these little connectors 
very easily forgotten to plug one thing back and your car will not work all for nothing you know, one thing unplugged would probably lead to disaster be methodical is the word clip I'm taking off all this is in aid of taking off the harness so far all this preparation so I don't mess up and to take oh, there it is I took the harness off so I can take off the air intake and there is the air intake not too bad considering of course clean it up any gunk you see that cable leads to the glow plugs and there's a cut cable there so I tape it up here's the glow plugs the new ones do you know after doing all this must you gotta be daft not to change the glow plugs and I use my Clark 450 newton meter impact wrench to take it off impact driver electrical one recorded it's, uh, it's an electrical cable corded uh, impact driver eyeing up the new clutch brand new. brand new looks shiny looks beautiful i put it i put on the uh, i think at this stage i put on the new dual mass flywheel already uh, there's that slave cylinder have I yeah. that's the old one but the lower part of it is new is that right I can't remember the kit I think it came with three things yeah this is me fitting right together I think that it gives you a new slave cylinder as well no that looks old so I'm undoing the little clip that's the old one that's a slave cylinder the kit comes with a uh, dual mass flywheel the clutch material the I'm repairing the, the sensor to the pressure sensor to the air intake new fuel filter as well might as well that's what I'm thinking There's the old one, old clutch plate. That's the new one. And it says there forward side, I think it says the bulgy end. EGR, I think. Yeah. Just get a new one or get a second hand new one. Alright, if you've enjoyed what you've seen, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you. Uh, that was a lot of effort to do.
even just to record this just showing you the strut in the end this last picture alright thank you like and